Do you remember the Super Nintendo? Gray and purple, and probably without that sticker right there. The Super Nintendo was released here in America in 1991. Uh, I think in Japan it was 1990, and in some places it was actually 92. This is how the controller looks right here. It's gray, you have the different colors of purple. It's kind of like a lilac, I think. Purple buttons, dark gray uh, joy pad, start buttons, L and R. L and R buttons were a new thing at the time. God, I feel old. Well, today I'm gonna to talk to you about something very, very interesting. What if I told you that you could take this nostalgic console you have in your house that has so many memories and you can just throw it, tuck it away? Well, you can, because Nintendo have released the Super NES Classic. Look at this box. It's modeled just like the original with the black and the red lettering. It looks super authentic because, well, it is an authentic product, but the design guy has got this look down to a T. This looks amazing. There's all the games in the back. We will look at this extensively. There's something special about this uh, SNES Classic. If you look right up here, it says, Never Before Released Star Fox 2. This has an unreleased game on it. The sequel for Star Fox 1. Let's take a look at this console. It looks just like the original. I mean, if you just show me a picture of that, I'd be like, oh yeah, that's the Super Nintendo. The controllers look a little big, but that's the original Super Nintendo, right? Au contraire, St. Pierre. Look at this. This is the Super Nintendo, if this will focus, in somebody's hand. Somebody is holding a Super Nintendo. You know what? I'm going to try this right now with my original copy. Let's try it. Let's try it right now. See her holding that right there? There we go. Right there. Same thing, right? This is a very, very tiny console. I actually got the box in the mail. I came home from school, much like I did when I was a child. Uh, my parents rented me the Super Nintendo um, when I was in kindergarten. And I waited all day in kindergarten. I remember squirming around in my chair, looking at the clock, waiting to come home, just to come home to a rented Super Nintendo to play Super Mario World for the first time. Well, now I can play Super Mario World again. This is probably the eighth time I've bought that game. <laughs> Let's take a look at what this says. It's a super retro blast from the past with the return of all-time fan favorite Super Nintendo Entertainment System. This mini-sized Super NES Classic Edition system is packed with over 20 pre-installed classic Super Nintendo games from the 90s, fully loaded and ready to play using original-style Super NES Classic controllers. This is a plug-and-play console. You will plug this into your HDTV. It will play. It's very simple. Man, SNES had great box art, didn't it? Little, some character, classic character designs. Mario with his cape. There's uh, Link, Fox McCloud. It looks, about, looks like that's about it. So here is the full lineup. Contra 3, The Alien Wars, Donkey Kong Country, Earthbound, Final Fantasy 3, F-Zero, Kirby's Dream Course, Kirby's Superstar, Mega Man X, <laughs> the greatest game of all time, <laughs> uh, Secret of Mana, Star Fox, Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Hyper Fighting, uh, Super Castlevania 4, Super, Ghosts and, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Super Mario Kart, Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, Super Mario World, the other greatest game of all time, um, Super Metroid, uh, that one will qualify for that too, Super Punch-Out, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, and Yoshi's Island. Plus, you have to unlock Star Fox 2, and they actually tell you exactly how to do it. Unlock Star Fox 2 by completing the first stage of Star Fox 1. That's pretty simple. I got very lucky ordering this. Uh, I was in a giantbomb.com chat room for a live show, and somebody posted the link. I don't know who it was, but thank you, kind sir. Ah, there it is. Nothing else in the box. I will be keeping that box, by the way. This is a, uh, ooh, this has got something on it. I thought that was just instruction, like, you know, just legal stuff, but no, there's the legal stuff. Toss that away. So this looks like a bona fide poster. That's awesome. I, have, I haven't watched any unboxing videos for this yet. So before we look at that, here's some instructions. Preferably in the language I speak. There we go. Uh, plug it into the wall. Plug the USB power cable into there. HDMI. I wonder if this is like a recreation of an official poster. Got some Mario World action going on here. Super Metroid. Super Mario Kart. Star Fox, the original and F-Zero, and uh, Link to the Past. Some marquee titles that they had to include in this thing, pretty much. There's some blurbs about all these games. Right there, I'll read the Mario one. 
With 96 levels and 9 worlds to explore, you'll be put to the test. Mario will have to run fast, fly high, dive deep, and jump far to save the day. Luckily, you'll have help from a friend, Yoshi. This is the most awesome Mario adventure yet. Well, you know what? They ain't lying. They ain't lying. That was a great Mario adventure. Just look at that. Look at Yoshi lick that football player. That's a game right there. Back in my day, they made games like that. And here's the controller it comes with. The Super Nintendo Mini Controller. You can barely press the buttons. I can smash all the buttons at once with my thumb. What a great addition. This is actually just a keychain. What's interesting is that the original NES Classic only came with one controller, whereas this one comes with two. That's probably why it was $80 and not $60. Here is the SNES Mini or SNES Classic controller. Uh, they actually, they did put the, uh, let's see if I can get a good, nice, fancy, a close-up of that, a little macro shot. They actually put the dips inside of these buttons, which is super important because these two have the dips, uh, and these two are extruded on top. So this is kind of like a round, globe-like feel, and this is indented. It's a, such a silly little nerdy thing to notice, but um, they did get that right, which is a nice touch. Um, let's see what says the back right here. Made in China, as I would expect. There's probably some extra stuff down there. And it even has the screws and everything. This is uh, pretty similar. I can tell you right now, though, the first thing I'm noticing is it feels different. As far as the actual texturing here, it feels kind of rough. So here is the original. Oh, hello. Much more clicky. <laughs> That's a controller that's had some use over its time. There you go. There's a comparison there. This feels different right here. This feels kind of smoother, and it looks like they got a little bit more of a coarse texture on the actual face of the controller. Uh, the gray is a little darker here. This is a little tad, tad lighter. I mean, it's very close. Just a little more grainy on this. But um, as far as everything goes, um, color maybe a tad lighter too, but that could just because dirt over time griming up this controller. Um, as far as everything goes, though, it feels very similar. This just feels like a newer, more responsive version of this because I've used this so much over the years. Very impressed with the replication. It feels, it feels pretty similar in the hands. I can't tell. This one might be a tad bigger, I think. I don't know. I mean, they're basically the same size. So this is a really good replication of that controller. And this is pretty much the same exact style as the Wii controllers. If you had the classic controllers or anything like that, it's the same kind of controller. You could probably plug this into a Wii remote, I think, and actually play SNES games that way. That's cool. Definitely different than the original. I mean, just to do a quick comparison. Here's how the original looks right here, and here's how this new one looks. Quite the difference, if I say so myself. Comes with this little plug here. You put your USB in there, plug it into the wall. It does come with an HDMI cord, which is nice. Sometimes they don't do that. And a USB right here. That is necessary for multiple reasons, some of which may be nefarious. And here it is. Good God. <laughs> this is so small. Wow, look at this. Okay, so this is fake because it doesn't take actual carts. That ain't happening. <laughs> Super Nintendo Insignia, get the, oh look, they actually made these move. I guess that they might actually power it then. You press that, reset moves. You know, oh, it's totally authentic, right? This is a old, this is just a, a SNES that was left out in the water too long and it shrunk. No, how do I open this? Look at that. Look at that. It's fake. It's fake. <laughs> That's so strange looking. They're just popping those out. It just feels sacrilegious to pop out those parts of this console. It has like the nice uh, grating right there. The back is much different because you have the HDMI stuff, which wasn't a thing in 1991. Uh, DC in, HDMI out. And it has these nice little bumpers here so it won't slide off your stuff very quickly. Whoa, wait a minute. What is this? The Super Nintendo has an expansion port? Was this for like that scope or whatever? I only have opened that in like 25 years. That's crazy. All right, enough about that. <laughs> so this is the console. You want a direct comparison, I'll give you one. Here's the original. Here's the new one. I mean, a picture's worth a thousand words. Doesn't go. That is absolutely insane. And to think that this thing has so much memory on it, it can store 20 games plus much more, which I might get into later. 
That is incredible. So there is one problem with this, aside from the fact that it can't fit these games in here. Let me use this original as an example. As many games as are included on the Super NES Classic, here's one that's not. Let me zoom into this beautiful game called Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest. This is not on this. They forgot it. Here's another game that's not on this. Mega Man X3. Great soundtrack on that game. And here's another game that's not on this thing. Arrow the Acrobat, which honestly is probably for the best. So it is not quite a full library, to say the least. But you know what? They did put really good games on this. 21 to be exact. And there are ways to add your own games. Right now, I'm going to spend a couple days to play test this, try to figure out how to capture some footage, and I'm going to give you guys an honest review and a little tour of the system. So I will be back in a few days, and I will give you my honest opinion and review. So as promised, I've had an extensive look at the system over the past few days. I have recorded some footage for you to look at of the interface and some of the games. I'll talk about more in detail later on. But for now, I'm going to talk about the uh, specs of it, how it actually runs, and uh, what you can do. So this is Donkey Kong Country. Uh, it looks very sharp on this display, but it's a little too sharp for this game. It's kind of jaggy. So what you can do on the SNES Classic is you can put on a CRT filter that gives it a little bit of blur, and it gives it the scan lines you were used to when you were growing up playing these games. And it looks much better on certain games like Donkey Kong Country, and I imagine Mario RPG, anything that has that pre-rendered 3D look, this does look better that way. I don't typically use the CRT filter, but for Donkey Kong Country, for the aforementioned reasons, I think it works for that game. And uh, this is an interesting thing. When you leave the system idle for a while, this starts happening. Mario and Luigi will go through, literally jump into your saved games, and show you the different filters and settings you can apply to each game. It's a cool little feature. It's not permanent or anything. Uh, games back in the day were all in the 4-3 ratio, typically. And nowadays, everything's widescreen, 16-9, so they remedy that by applying frames. You can add all these different frames to the games. Thank God they don't stretch everything out like they could have. So you can add all these different frames, customize them. I use the wood panel for Donkey Kong Country, the space panels for uh, Star Fox, any kind of space game that looks good on. If you want something a little more cinematic, like uh, for Final Fantasy 3, you got the curtains. Uh, let's see here. We have the... I typically find this one to work for Mario World. It's like a blue skyline. I think it looks good with most of the graphics in Mario World. Something a little more subtle is the Super Metroid one I used here. Again, you can apply any kind of filter, any kind of frame to these games. But for Super Metroid, you can see that changing a little bit. These are dynamic. Some of these actually change color depending on what's happening on the screen. It's about five seconds ahead or so. And it'll start changing the color based on some primary color it notices in the game. It's a neat little feature. Another cool feature is the rewind setting. So if you really screw up in a game, like say this really hard minecart sequence in Donkey Kong Country, you can actually go back to your save file, rewind, and find the point where you want to start at and not make the same mistake twice. The rewind feature may be cheesing it a little bit, but it is a godsend if you're not good at Donkey Kong Country. I did beat this without the rewind feature, but uh, beating it twice uh, proved to be a little bit challenging, so I thought it'd be the perfect way to showcase what the rewind can do. Another cool feature is the save states, kind of related to the rewind. You can save your game at any point in time and jump right back in. It's really helpful for games like Mega Man X where there is no save system, it's just passwords. Now you can jump right back into where you want to go. It's really helpful. But I think it's time to look at some games individually. I'll be very uh, brief with some of these and I won't look at all of them. But I wanted to uh, do a mini review for some of these games, talk about some memories and how they hold up now in 2017. This is Star Fox, and I'm actually playing for the first time with this one, trying to unlock Star Fox 2. All I gotta do is beat stage 1, and then Star Fox 2 will unlock. Here it is. Here's the, the big moment. And now you have Star Fox 2, the unreleased game available at your disposal. So I'm definitely gonna take a look at that, because after all this time I want to see what this is all about. Using the space backdrop here. So here is Star Fox 2, the elusive game that people have been wanting to see forever even though there was a leaked prototype for a while. This is the full game. Um, you can see the graphics are pretty impressive considering it's on a Super Nintendo. Um, you pick your pilot and your wingman. I picked this Lynx-like cat creature. And you're in space. It starts out with like a first-person mode. You're shooting at this polygonal spaceship. And then it goes into traditional uh, Star Fox controls where you're you know behind third-person camera. And then you can become a walker, which was new in this game. I believe they implemented this in the Wii U version of Star Fox. 
It's a pretty impressive game as far as what they were able to accomplish on a 16-bit console, but it definitely is dated now. But hey, a 3D game on the Super Nintendo, that's pretty cool. And hey, speaking of 3D, or quasi-3D in this case, with the uh, Mode 7 graphics, it's the original Mario Kart. You have to actually unlock the special cup, which I forgot about. Uh, this this particular special cup is very difficult. This game is very hard. I mean, if you're playing beyond 50cc, you're in 100cc, or God help you, 150cc, you're going to have to really struggle to get to the top. Sometimes, as you can see, you'll get like a lightning bolt, but usually it's all about skill and clawing your way back to top to reclaim your position. I like that. There's no blue shell. It really is more of a skill-based version of Mario Kart. And it's fun to mess with the computer for that reason, because you can really, really screw over the computer in certain levels, mainly in the uh, Mushroom Cup. Here's Rainbow Road. Uh, one of my favorite courses in Mario Kart. It looks really good on the SNES. It's, again, very difficult. The walls have no barriers. You pretty much fall right off easily. And one thing about this mode I really want to showcase is the music. Rainbow Road's music is fantastic, and I'm going to shut up and let you guys listen to it. Very uplifting. Just a really good soundtrack. This is a, a very good game if you put the time and effort into it and you don't expect it to be as easy and hand-holdy as the other Mario Karts. A lot of fun. And one really cool thing I forgot about is this game has a credit reel. I've seen this once in my life. I don't remember it at all. It has a different song. It has this cool thank you screen at the end where you have to do the hard reset, and which means you have to like start over on this console because the reset actually just goes back to the menu. Here's another game trying to take advantage of the 3D trend of the mid-90s. It's Donkey Kong Country using uh, pre-rendered 3D graphics. These games are so fun with the Ride-In Buddies, Espresso, Winky the Frog. I love these games and moreover than the games, I love the music. Just listen. Here is another great game that has a very atmospheric style. Very dark, very moody. It's Super Metroid. This game has held up extremely well. It has the map system, which helps out a lot compared to the original Metroid. Speaking of which, you actually return to the area of the original Metroid. I love this game. It's uh, one of the best games ever made. It holds up better than almost every other game you can think of. Fantastic. All kinds of fun little secrets that you have to find. It's one of the better games on the Super Nintendo for sure. Give this one a chance if you want a really fun, uh, rewarding, and atmospheric game. And by the way, yes, the intro holds up very well too. Look at this intro. Check that out. The game was really ahead of its time, I think. So here's something a little lighter. Uh, Kirby. Kirby Superstar, which has like seven or eight different games on it. Some of which are small, some of which are quite large. Kirby, as you probably know, can suck up enemy powers and become them and do fun stuff like that. It also introduces one of the best features, which is the ability to have a friend play alongside of you. It can be a friend or a computer. It's a great couple game. It's a great game to play if you got a, your best friend over and want to relive some classic games. The SNES Classic does come with two controllers, so this is actually really easy to do. Uh, all the fun power-ups in this one. Like, the game is very creative, like the crazy parrot right there. I love this game, and I think it holds up very well. It's just classic Kirby goodness, and it throws you a curveball, because again, there are about eight games on this uh, compilation Kirby Superstar, some of which are, again, are kind of like campaign games, some of which are mini games, but they're all very fun, and I definitely recommend Kirby Superstar if you're looking for a good multiplayer game. The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. For many people, this is one of the quintessential classic video games. And it holds up very well uh, graphic-wise, the rain effects there, gameplay-wise. If you're looking for an adventure, you can't go wrong with A Link to the Past. It's included in the 20 games, or 21 games in the set, as is Super Mario World, another one of the greatest games of all time. This game is just, it. you know it would hold up, and I can confirm easily, this game holds up so well. It is one of the best Mario games. Uh, my personal favorite uh, 2D Mario game is this one right here, Super Mario World. It's got a good sense of humor, lots of creative enemies really did a lot of different things with the Mario franchise at the time. Uh, my favorite part about it, though, is probably all the secrets. You get this top secret area where you can get you load up on Yoshis and feathers and everything else. Um, that's, that's definitely one of the most intriguing parts, is rediscovering all these old secrets, finding all the secret key areas. There's so much to this game. It, it, it's a huge game, and it's two players, not simultaneous, but it's a great game to play with people, and it's fun to discover all these secrets together and find all the secrets in the hidden star world. 
You know, as a kid, I thought I beat this game pretty well, but there's another secret that I didn't know about as a kid under Cheese Bridge. You have to take Yoshi, you go somehow pass through all these saws if you're lucky. You go under the goalpost, you ditch Yoshi, poor Yoshi dies. You collect the moon, which is a rare item that gives you a 3 up. And then you uh, pass this secret goalpost, and there's a friggin' vine with a secret area in Soda Lake. This is where Torpedo Ted is, which was only, he's always in the credits, this bullet guy right here. And I was like, where is that guy in the game? I've never seen him. He's only in Soda Lake. Another just example of how awesome Super Mario World is with all its secrets. And look at this, Mario goes under a waterfall. That is insane, that blew my mind the first time I saw it, knowing that this was hidden in the game the entire time. Mario World is freaking fantastic. So if you're looking for something a little more RPG-like, there's uh, Final Fantasy, Secret of Mana, it is missing Chrono Trigger, just for the record, I know a lot of people were upset about that. But it has your RPG fix too, because Final Fantasy 3 is many people's one of many people's favorite games. My personal favorite game though is Mega Man X. Good God is Mega Man X great. This is I call this Mega Man X the most perfect game ever made. The art style, the music, the gameplay, it's all like just a 10 out of 10 for me. I absolutely love this game. I adore it. I'm pretty good at it. I'm not good at a lot of games, but I'm pretty good at Mega Man X and Dunk on Country. And one of the best parts about Mega Man X as I've been replaying it is going to the bosses and seeing how creative it is in terms of how you defeat some of the bosses with their weaknesses. Spark Mandrel, you just shoot him with the ice and he freezes to death. Uh, my favorite one though is Armored Armadillo. You can try to shoot him with your X Buster as much as you want. You'll get a hit once in a while, but he'll only shield it until you use Spark Mandrel's electricity attack. It was like battle damage before battle damage was a normal thing. Just a really neat feature. One of my favorite parts about Mega Man X is all the stuff you can do. You can cut off launch Octopus's tentacles with a boomerang. Just a fantastic game with an equally fantastic soundtrack that I'm going to let you guys listen into right now. So if the 21 games included aren't enough for you, you can always add more games. That's right, there are ways to do it. You plug in your SNES to the PC. There's a whole tutorial online. It's not that difficult. You can add all the games you want, including everyone's favorite classic Super Nintendo game, Home Improvement. Yes, you can finally relive Home Improvement on the Super Nintendo with all of Tim Taylor's quips. It's amazing. This is a real game. This really exists. If you want to do something equally goofy, you can go to NBA Jam, relive that game. One of people's favorite games of the era. And you can add, uh, I don't know, put in Bill Clinton, why not? So you can have Bill Clinton, boom shaka locking down the aisle, doing this mega dunk by the former president of the United States. Or how about uh, if you want to play some actual, like, really good games, how about Aladdin? You have Aladdin on the Super Nintendo, one of my personal favorite games. This is when movie license games weren't that terrible. Aladdin, uh, The Lion King, among others. Really fun game. And I could finally play Mega Man X3, which has an equally good soundtrack to one. This game's fantastic. Wasn't included, I guess I understand why. It is a uh, third party game from Capcom. There's a, you can actually play Zero, which is one of the highlights of the game for me. Absolutely had to include this one. One of the games I was upset they didn't include though was Donkey Kong Country 2, which is my personal favorite Donkey Kong Country. I mean, just listen to the soundtrack to get an idea of why I love this game as much as I do. Soundtrack done by David Wise. It's an incredibly moving soundtrack. You can see Diddy Kong getting down to it right there. One of the best parts about this game is Dixie Kong because you can use her hair to helicopter around the level, fly like that. Find all kinds of hidden secrets, which is a recurring theme in this video. I love secrets in video games. Um, I love the, the levels in this too, even though obviously this game looks kind of dated being kind of like, you know, low res 3D. I'm just looking at, uh, what is it, Squitter the Spider, I think his name is. Going through these lava levels and just... It just there's a certain flow to Donkey Kong Country where if you don't get the flow, you probably don't like the games. But there's a flow to it, and it's really fun and satisfying when you do something like, you know, go through the rats, or I try to there. Luckily, I have that trusty rewind feature, which does actually work with all these new uh, unofficial games. You can rewind to the part where you died, and uh, pick up your slack and get some revenge on those rats. Good stuff. So let's take a look at a different game now. Let's take a look at... Uh, how about a WWF game? WWF WrestleMania, the arcade game. This is one of the first games I played that got me into wrestling. I loved this game as a kid. It's not that great of a game, to be honest, but... Oh my god, what happened? So yeah, this is the, uh, 
This is the, I guess, the, the trade-off for these unofficial games included. WrestleMania, the arcade game, does not work that well with the SNES Classic, unless I did something wrong, I don't know. Uh, another little flaw I noticed is Super Return of the Jedi. Listen in to Luke's lightsaber. Can't really hear it that well. Some of the sound mixing, it's there, but some of the sound mixing is really off. And there's something, whatever's happening here with Uniracers. Uh, this game is a lot of fun, it's really quirky. But uh, again, the emulation is not perfect in all these games, but for the most part, it all worked pretty well. I mean, I really can't complain about a lot of this stuff. Super Adventure Island looked and sounded really good. Man, this game sounds good. <laughs> I love the crazy Lisa Frank visual style this game has. <laughs> Very vibrant. But most games work pretty well from what I've seen. It also means you can add Super Mario All-Stars, which people really wanted to see. This game is just um, Super Mario, uh, the classic trilogy, plus Lost Levels, which is the Japanese Super Mario 2, with updated visuals. That's all it really is. So what is my final verdict on the Super Nintendo Classic? If you grew up with this as I did, uh, this is a no-brainer, this is a must-buy. You plug it into the TV, it's effortless. You want to add additional games on it, it doesn't take a lot of work to do it. I can't recommend that enough, even if it is flawed with some of the emulation with the unofficial games. Most of them look just, just fine though, so playing all that in high definition is great. Make sure your TV is on game mode. And one little thing I want to bring up though is the controller length. You have to sit right in front of the TV because even though they made these longer, it's still not good enough. So, if you can get over that, get the Super Nintendo Classic. I'm Delta Zero of Living Vicariously HD. Subscribe for more.